Send a child to college. Buy this watch. Send a child to a four-year American university. Or buy this watch. And you gotta ask yourself, which one has a better ROI? I'm kidding. Obviously, the watch is a better investment, but at $120,000, this is not a choice I'm actually considering, though, lordy, this is a special watch. I get to play with a lot of watches. That's one of the main reasons I make these videos. So it's easy for me to get jaded. And maybe jaded isn't the right word. It's just harder for me to get excited about a lot of watches. But this Moser Streamliner Turbion Vanta Black, this is a thrill. This is the first precious metal watch from Moser that I've made a video about, and the first Turbion watch that I've borrowed from any brand, but this is the third Streamliner watch that I've made a video about. In 2019, the small Swiss brand announced the Streamliner collection of watches. On paper, you think, oh great, another luxury brand making an integrated bracelet steel sports watch. Next. But Moser being what it is, of course the Streamliner was and is really different. Not angular and industrial like so many integrated bracelet watches, but graceful and elegant and very organic looking. And the Streamliner design isn't for everyone, I get that, but I think it is for me. I first made a video about the time-only Streamliner center seconds with the green dial. Some people call it the Green Dragon. Very cool watch and long sold out. And I made a video about the colorful Streamliner flyback chronograph but the fascinating automatic movement that looks like a manually wound movement. And now this. This is actually the first precious metal Streamliner watch. I had to double check that fact. A Streamliner in gold seems obvious and inevitable despite these watches being marketed as sports watches. Rich folk love to show how rich they are and steel is for plebeians. But in fairness to the rich who love gold, gold looks awesome. Sweet baby corn, this looks good to me. The case and bracelet are made of 5N red gold. You can call it rose gold. 5N refers to an alloy that's about 75% gold, 5% silver, and 20% copper. Now, I might have many urges, but I'm not a metallurgist. <clears throat> so, <laughs> I don't know if this watch will tarnish and oxidize over time. Excuse me, patina. Watch collectors are supposed to call it patina. The red gold case is 40 millimeters wide and 12 millimeters thick, which is Surprisingly slim for an automatic tourbillon watch. As for the length, it's hard to measure this one. I could make an argument that because of this lugless design, the case is 40 millimeters long. You know, that's exactly what I'll do, in fact. 40 millimeters wide and 40 millimeters long. The watch is water resistant to 120 meters, which is kind of crazy. Good crazy, because it's strange to think about someone diving or even just swimming with this watch. But I want to be that person. I want to be the person doing laps while wearing a red gold tourbillon watch. Let's make that happen together. After the $120,000 price tag, the second drawback to this gold case and bracelet is the weight. On the full bracelet, the watch weighs 232 grams. That makes this one of the heavier watches I've ever worn. It's about 100 grams more than a Seiko 5 sports watch on a bracelet. You know, that's just in case you were trying to decide which of these two watches you might want to buy. In the hand, the weight is shocking, but on my 7-inch wrist, it's very balanced. Because the bracelet is heavy, the watch doesn't feel top-heavy. The weight is very well distributed, much better distributed than my own weight, I can tell you. Because of the nearly round case shape, the 40mm Streamliner wears small smaller than a 40 millimeter watch with traditional lugs, and certainly smaller than many 40 millimeter watches with integrated bracelets. If you've ever tried on a 39 millimeter Royal Oak, you know how huge they wear. Inside the watch is the HMC 804. It's an automatic movement with a tourbillon. So what is a tourbillon? Put simply, a tourbillon is a watch mechanism that adds a zero to the end of the retail price. For a real better explanation, I decided to ask everyone's favorite artificial intelligence system, ChatGPT. Hi, please don't turn into Skynet. Can you explain what a tourbillon is? A tourbillon is a mechanism found in some mechanical watches that helps to counteract the effects of gravity on the watch's timekeeping. It does this by rotating the entire escapement, 
the part of the watch that controls timekeeping, around its own axis, which helps to average out any positional errors caused by gravity. The tourbillon was invented by Abraham Louis Breguet in the 18th century and is considered a highly intricate and prestigious complication in watchmaking. Wow, thanks ChatGPT. Again, please don't murder us all. As the robot said, the tourbillon was invented by Abraham Louis Breguet to counteract gravity and to keep a timepiece accurate as it's moved around. Does it actually make a modern watch more accurate? Eh, maybe, probably not. But this one goes the extra mile. It uses not one, but two balance springs, one above the other. The idea is that the two hair springs help compensate for positional differences in the watch. Yep, I don't get it either. These days the tourbillon is a watchmaking flex and an unassailably cool one. Even without the tourbillon, this would be an impressive high horology movement. It's beautifully decorated and finished with a red gold rotor weight and about a 72 hour power reserve. The movement is made by Precision Engineering AG, which makes a lot of Moser movements. Precision Engineering and H. Moser & Company are both owned by Moser Watch Holdings, so you can say that this is an in-house movement, but all of you need to stop caring about in-house or not. It's a silly thing to get hung up on. The dial is coated with a patented texture made from carbon nanotubes. It's called Vanta Black, and it was originally developed by the National Physical Laboratory. It's mainly used in scientific instruments like telescopes, and that's because Vanta Black absorbs 99.965% of visible light, which is bananas. It's like, how much more black could this be? And the answer is none. None is that good? more black. It's a truly bottomless black. And one silly, dumb complaint is that because the dial is super duper black, dust and smudges on the crystal show up a lot and easily. That shouldn't be a detractor for a normal person, but as someone who spends a lot of time photographing watches, it's annoying. Like with all Streamliner watches, the hands use a loom application called Globolite. This is a combination of luminous material and ceramic that allows the loom to have some structure. The dial markers are not luminous, instead they are frosted gold on a layer below the Vanta Black dial. It's basically a sandwich dial. And this is the only Streamliner watch to have this kind of dial and markers. The design of Streamliner watches is unusual. With its flowing lines and curves, it's very serpentine, very snake-like. There's nothing like this on the market today. Now, maybe the Ebel Wave has a similar bracelet, I guess? And the vintage Omega Lobster bears some resemblance. Man, what a funky monkey. But to my eyes, there is not a direct precedent to the Streamliner watches. Which makes me think I'm not looking hard enough. If you can identify watches with similar designs, holler in the comments. I'm curious what's out there. But I'm quite sure there is nothing with this design, and this dial, and this movement, all within a rose gold case and with a rose gold bracelet. This is one hell of a package, that's what she said. And unfortunately, a combo like this comes with a price that is at least an order of magnitude out of my budget. I'm sure that's the same for many of you. So this right here is probably the closest we're going to get to having this watch. And you know what? That's fine. Thinking that you need to own a thing to appreciate it, that's, that's a terrific way to miss out on many joys in life. And I don't need to own this watch to enjoy it because even if I don't own it, I can still send photos to my friends and make them jealous if only for a few days. And isn't making people jealous the truest source of happiness? Yeah, that's the good stuff. That's the good stuff.